Hi guys, welcome to the 70th lecture of the course Biological Diversity Theories, Measure and Data Sampling Techniques. Today we will talk about species abundance models. There are different types of evenings. Type of different patterns are called species abundance models. There are four main types. One is the geometric series, the second one is the log series, then we have log normal series and broken stick model. We, we see that there is a decreasing dominance of a single species from the model 1 to the model 4. So if we try to realize and how this hypothetical, to figure out how this hypothet hypothetical model curves uh, appear if the maximum evenings will be there, you will see that this is just a straight line that is parallel to the x-axis. And when there is minimal evenings, only one species in the sample for instance, we will see that is a straight line clo almost close to the uh, parallel line of the y axis. When we want to represent different models for evenness distribution, uh, abundance distribution, we can start from the less even, that means that there is only one species or very few species in the sample that represent the almost parallel line to the y axis and this is the geometric series then we move more and we have a kind of log series the sample is more even then we have a log normal series the evenness is rising and the last one is the broken stick model that is the maximum evening model so we have different observation for instance evenness increases from the geometric series to the log series to the normal series until we reach the broken stick models that is the more the most even sample so the dominance of having any one species decreases from the geometric to the log to the log normal to the broken stick and models so broken stick is the closest to the maximum evenness an important question is how else could this graph be constructed so how would the data there be be interpreted there are possible ideas, for instance, we can build this data on biomass or we can build this, this graph on the number of species per trophic levels, where the trophic levels is almost equal to the number of species and the number of species is almost equal to the abundance, so we can use different variables to build these abundance models and we can use, for instance, the number of species of feeding yield where a feeding yield is almost equal to the number of species or life forms or landscapes or other variables. What is very important is the testability because the simple visualization, a simple inspection of a single curve is insufficient. So how to test each abundance model that differs from between each model? In the case of geometric series we need just simple rank abundance plot with abundance or log scale on the y axis. To test the log series instead we can use the frequency distribution of species versus the abundances. For to test the log normal instead we use a similar to log but uh, we can use a log scale on the y axis. To test the broken stick instead we can use the rank abundance plot using ranks rather than the abundance. So let's explain each model in detail. Geometric series for instance is a niche preemption uh, model that is structuring the ecosystem. So species 1 in, in this case takes a certain percentage of the resources and prevent others from using them. So it assumes that competitive exclusion and resource exhaustion are the uh, main force that influence the series. So then species 2 takes a bit more and then it continues with other species until all resources are used and all species are included. So you see that geometric series is a kind of uh, preemption model that where minimal cooperation in the ecosystem is assumed. It also assumes that species abundance is roughly proportional to the total resource use. So we have a linear increase in abundance, that means that there is a linear increase in the resource use. So interspecific per individual resource use is comparable. So there are not many differences in this, it's just that the first species takes more than the second, that takes more than the third and so on. So mostly common found species poor communities because this model we can see only where species number is uh, quite low it means that in disturbance size, in uh, polluted size and this is typical of early succession, degraded ecosystem 
for instance, enriched invaded ecosystem, harsh ecosystems. Log series model instead is closely related to geometric series. And some studies have found that both fitting the same data. So this is very similar to geometric in the hypothesis about the origin of community and where the arrival of species to a novel environment uh, is the same in the geometric series and the log series, but both say that a new factor predominantly structure the community. So both say that one, the geometric, or a few, in the case of log series, species dominate a species, the total number of species, so dominate a sample. The log series differs from geometric in the assumption about the arrival. For instance, arrival in the log series are randomly arranged. So some species can get some clumped, some long intervals between arrivals, and in geometric series instead the arrivals are regular and continual. There is a way to measure the uh, diversity in a log series distribution for undisturbed size and is called alpha Fisher index. This Fisher index is uh, easy to calculate, is a, it uses an iterate process when you calculate the uh, equation that is from one side just the species total number divided by total abundance and on the other side the iterate logarithm of this value. To test the, fish, the alpha Fisher index it's possible to use a statistical test that is called the kolmogorov smirnov test that is one of the best. In this case we can test if there are differences between two samples on the observed data and those we expected. This test it's called goodness of the fit test because it is very useful to understand if the distribution of our data fits with the log series distribution. The log normal series is the most common in the natural communities because many data from samples that we can collect in, the, in nature fit with the log normal series. These usually uh, are la large mature communities, that's a representative of large mature communities. And uh, for instance, in the temperate forest trees, we usually see this kind of distribution of the abundances. Ubiquity in this case may be by chance or simple mathematics. So there is a normal distribution that is often a consequence of large numbers. This depends also on the central limit theorem, that is the large number factors influence the random variation will, uh, that will result in normal distribution. So a central assumption is that behind the parametric statistics that the higher is the probability with the higher number of factors and the more the, the, our data will fit a log normal distribution. It's a kind of bell-shaped distribution as explained by Preston with the veil line that when we don't get rare species, we have the left, left side of the distribution that is completely veiled. If we look at the picture, at this histogram representation, and we see that species are grouped in two classes, you, you according to log two, uh, so they are called octaves, that most common way to represent this data, and any log base can be used anyway, but in this case, if you use octave, so you use log two, we can see that in big samples, in where we have enough data, uh, we will fit this kind of distribution in a bell-shaped form. In the log normal community assembly, there is assumption about the community formation that is the sequential breaking of empty niche space. So each species that arrives splits the niche space and occupies a niche space that is proportional to its relative abundance. So the probability of niche space being subdivided is independent of its size. In this case, we have a breakage of, uh, that occurs su successively. Mechanisms that shape the log normal community can be through an ecological or evolutionary process. And fit to model is not necessary to support the assumption, so we don't need to uh, test this model to uh, necessarily support the assumption we provide. There are other explanations of this distribution, uh, as I told you, the central limit the theorem that not necessary a, is not necessarily a biological explanation. And another idea, another hypothesis on this distribution is that species can be divided in three abundance classes, from rare, that are almost 60%, 65%, of the total number of species, intermediate that are almost 25% and common that are almost 10% of species, so this shapes our distribution that we see in our graph. 
and uh, community saw in this way are composed by patches. Patches of group of rare, intermediate and common species and the abundance of species that is equal to the sum of the abundance in all patches. So this is enough to result in a log normal distribution. The last model is the broken stick model. Sometimes it's called random niche boundary hypothesis because the broken stick means that that you have a stick that is broken in small pieces, so and randomly and simultaneously is broken uh, that without any real relationship between early species presence and niche size of subsequent arrival. So it is unlikely that all earlier models, so it's completely different from them, and uh, successfully fit in past. For instance, uh, MacArthur show in 1960 that passerine birds uh, follow this kind of uh, uh, abundance stick, broken stick model uh, that uh, minnows or gastrops, King showed in 1964 that also follows this. But in general, it, this, this model best fit in narrowly defined communities of taxonomically related organisms. So there is no adequate diversity index needed if data fit broken stick, because if the, the, our data fit this broken stick model, we don't have diversity index we can use uh, to uh, understand the model or to just to explain this model. And we can just use richness, just simple richness S, that is an adequate measure of this diversity in this kind of distribution. Broken stick model also suggests us that there is a most equitable species abundance as ever happened naturally, and most biologically realistic uniform distribution. Theoretically, if only we look at one resource, for instance a space, we can explain this broken stick model. But Strongly, it's, this model is subject to sample size, we, when we don't have crowding limitation between species. So, in general, there are limitations to this uh, model that is not really applicable to a single sample, usually conceived as the average number of species abundance distribution. It can also be misleading to test fit of a single sample to theory of equal resource partitioning. And anyway, the broken stick model is fine to use as we will use it to uh, the other ends of two species abundance model. So that's all for today. Thanks for your attention and see you next time.